Welcome to another installment of the Plant Engineering Video Discussions. I'm Amara Rasgis, and today we're talking about lubrication as it relates to manufacturing. I'm here with Neil Cantor, who is representing STLE, and we're talking about a variety of metrics and topics plant engineers would be interested in. Hi, Neil. Hello, uh, Amara. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah. So here's a bit of background about Neil. Neil Cantor received his doctorate in chemistry from the University of Michigan. He's been working in the metalworking fluid industry for more than 30 years. Presently, he runs his own consulting company, Chemical Solutions, which specializes in commercial development, marketing, product development, and regulatory support for the metalworking fluid industry. Neil is a tech advisor for the Society of Tribologists and Lubrication Engineers, known as STLE, and a member of the American Chemical Society, as well as SAE International. All right, Neil, let's jump right in here. Let's talk about the recent Emerging Trends Report released by STLE. What is it? The Emerging Trends Report discusses key trends that are impacting those who work in the lubrication and tribology field, including those who are in the manufacturing sector. Um, and it includes a discussion of topics, uh, including supply chain, which has not, which has continued to be a problem uh, going back uh, since before the COVID-19 pandemic, electrification, uh, manufacturing, uh, medical and health, uh, regulatory, and this concept of sustainability. Okay, so what are some of the key findings from this Emerging Trends Report? The key finding really is the fact that uh, the world, and that includes due to issues like global warming, is moving to more sustainability. Being more sustainable means being more efficient, uh, uh, being more productive, uh, reduce, uh, saving energy, uh, reducing emissions. These are all factors in. And from our perspective in doing the trends report uh, on sustainability, the key finding really is that tribology and lubrication is going to play a very important role in helping those who are using lubricants in the manufacturing sector and other sectors uh, to improve their sustainability by uh, doing things such as lowering their uh, carbon footprint uh, and that sort of thing. So what do we do in the uh, uh, lubrication field? We reduce friction and wear. We do that all the time uh, from that standpoint. But what does that mean from the standpoint of sustainability and uh, helping uh, in the fight against uh, global warming? Well, really, this goes to uh, a study that was uh, st uh, done six years ago in 2017 uh, uh, by uh, uh, in support of the U.S. Department of Energy, in which uh, the tribology work done um, indicated that by using uh, proper uh, tribology, existing and novel tribology approaches, this can lead to a savings in the U.S. of 22 quads of energy. Uh, and you can see what a quad of energy is. This is substantial. If you look at the uh, the chart on the right-hand side of this figure, that represents a 20% reduction in U.S. energy consumption, which is extraordinarily uh, significant for doing this thing. And this is not just doing existing and novel tribology type approaches. So that's well and good. But where does that lead us to? That lead us to, uh, and I'm a chemist, so I do equation type things, energy savings with the proper tribology practices leads to reduction of emissions. And this is a significant tribology opportunity for all of us working in this space, uh, particularly in the manufacturing sector, to improving uh, uh, the efficiency and productivity in manufacturing, reducing energy use, reducing emissions. These are a win-win. So. How much, how significant is emissions reduction? Moving along with that and connecting dots here, 22 quads of energy, as you can see, based on work that was done by our contributors to the trends report, will eliminate 110 million metric tons of carbon dioxide produced in the U.S. annually. And this represents 5% of the U.S. share for limiting global warming to an increase of 1.5 C, which is desired by 2030. And the 1.5 C is 1.5 C above pre-industrial levels from the 19th century. And as quoted by one of the contributors, as the key contributors to this uh, work is, tribology's contribution is more significant than many other approaches for emissions reduction. 
This represents the opportunity. This represents uh, where th uh, those in the manufacturing sector are going to rely on those who are handling lubrication, tribology problems to provide them with this type of savings. So this is really the key finding in the report. So one other way to look at this is from an automotive emission standpoint. And you can see from the various figures we looked at from the U.S. Bureau of Transportation, uh, the number of vehicles on the road in the U.S. in 2022, uh, how much uh, emissions are emitted based on uh, findings from the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, by one uh, passenger car. Basically doing the math, total passenger car emissions are 1.24 billion metric tons. So using this and looking at the pie chart, the red piece of the pie chart is removed by tribology. That represents about 10% of U.S. cars, passenger cars, with internal combustion engines being removed from the roads if following proper tribology practices. This is an extraordinary finding. This represents a way for tribology to reduce emissions. Okay, so that's a ton of information, Neil. How will tribologists and lubrication engineers improve manufacturing productivity with the growing use of automation? Kind of switching subjects here. Well, yeah, but it's tailored to your readers and and uh, uh, and, and listeners in the podcast. Uh, and really, I think the thing here to look at uh, is the robot. The robot density in manufacturing has doubled between 2016 and 2021, as you can see, and I've got my smiling robot there, uh, to 141 robots per 10,000 employees. Now we're getting to the point of not just robots, which do ma uh, do predict labor independent of human contact, but we're now looking at cobots, which interact with human beings. They are robots that provide interaction so that human uh, beings, people can uh, train them, can pre-program them to do certain tasks. They can move from one task to another, unlike a robot, which is really tailored to doing a specific task. And we're also looking at going from Industry 4.0, which many of your readers have uh, probably looked at, which is linking data, connect uh, connectivity, automation, and artificial intelligence, AI, to including the human element, where the human uh, individuals uh, interacting with the robot, that's Industry 5.0. So we're moving along very rapidly in this approach to using robots and cobots uh, in the manufacturing sector. And so how do the tribologists fit into this whole thing? Really, a lot of this is gonna be training and programming uh, of AI, artificial intelligence-based robots, utilizing machine learning, uh, which includes things like condition monitoring of lubrication uh, and tribology systems, working with molecular dynamics to eventually design new lubricants, uh, based on what's going on here, says the robots, the cobots are going to figure out what's going on here and make recommendations on changes to be made based on how a particular uh, lubricant system is working. And each lubricant system is unique. And eventually moving to what is known as tribotronics, which is just getting off the ground. Uh, some sort of controller robot using sensory data to make adjustments to lubrication system and predicting how uh, friction and wear will uh, occur early on in the use of a lubricant in a new system. So all this is happening and could continue to accelerate as we move along here. Right, definitely. And so with the drive towards sustainability, how can this metric be integrated with tribology and into a manufacturing program? So really what we're looking at is moving into a reliability excellence program because plant failures are not just due to the lubricant, in tribology, though in some cases people might argue that's the case, it's not. You can see in this graph percent plant failures due to production, plant engineering, maintenance, sales, procurement, and management. These are the leading cases. So the idea is to institute a reliability excellence program, which encompasses all these things, and integrate tribology and sustainability into manufacturing. As you're looking at sustainability, you're looking to uh, reduce and minimize these type of failures by using the right lubricant to provide uh, proper uh, uh, performance, uh, reduce friction and wear, reduce emissions, save energy. These are all win-win factors here that are going to reduce the percent of plant failures. So this is an extremely important concept that we believe uh, should be instituted more widely uh, within the manufacturing sector. And this leads to things like uh, production-led reliability, a proactive culture, and using sustainability is a metric along with everything else. Um, this reduces the carbon footprint and essentially will lead to uh, a fairly quick return on investment, which is dollars, if you will, and dollar savings, which is one of the things we're trying to help people understand what they can do from an economic standpoint within months. 
And this has been tried and done by people, including uh, one individual who contributed to the trends report. This works. This works. The idea is uh, to get this out to your readers and listeners in the podcast to understand that sustainability is not something ancient, foreign, or, or unknown here. This is something that can help them uh, to provide a better manufacturing environment, better productivity, and it's a win for them and win for management and win for their workers. Got it. So, Neil, break out your crystal ball. <laughs> what lubricant trends should manufacturers be aware of moving forward? Well, this is uh, a challenge, but yeah, really, when we're talking about things, uh, people talk about um, you know synthetic lubricants and they're better performing, but there are different types of synthetic lubricants. I think the challenge here, in terms of carbon footprint and reducing carbon footprint, is to find what's in the middle of this diagram, the sweet spot, and the sweet spot would be finding uh, a synthetic lubricant type uh, where the base stock, which is the major component contributor here to uh, uh, carbon footprint, find it as sustainably sourced, uh, can be bio-based, and can be environmentally friendly. These are three concepts that are not interchangeable. They are all distinct, but by working with suppliers, uh, uh, manufacturing and users working with their suppliers, they can find the sweet spot to maximize the value out of environmentally friendly, sustainably sourced and bio-based. In effect, find the, find the optimum sweet spot and it'll be different for each application. Got it. Well, thanks, Neil. I do appreciate that information. Thank you. Yeah, well, thank you for joining us for this plant engineering discussion about STLE's Emerging Trends Report. And we do look forward to our next conversation. Thank you and goodbye.